I want to talk to you today about a subject that I think may be one of the most important things that you will develop in knowing God. And I want to help you know God better um, every time we're together. And I think this may be one of the most important things. And uh, so Luke chapter 8, verse 5 through 8 says, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and the birds ate it up. That's one kind of seed. Number two, some fell on rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. That's the second kind of seed. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. That's the third kind of seed. And then still other seed fell on good soil. Somebody shout good soil. This little uh, precursor, you want to be good soil. That's the goal. It came up and it yielded a crop a hundred times more than sown. How many of you would like to yield in your life a hundred times more than what you invested? Uh, Come on, somebody. You would like that in your 401k, wouldn't you? How many of you like a hundred times more in relationships than what you sowed into them? A hundred times more in your finances than what you sowed into them? Um, if you don't want that, I, I, don't, I, don't, I can't help you. So when he said this, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. I want to talk to you today about how to hear the voice of God. About how to hear the voice of God. One of the most important things that you'll learn in your life is how to hear God's voice. You need that more than you need anything else, more than you need resources, more than you need health. You need to know how to hear the voice of God. Let's pray together. Father, I pray in this moment that the word of God would um, land in good soil today. I pray, Father, that you would speak to us, that you'd speak through me. I pray that you'd break through any and every barrier that would cause us to not be able to hear what you want to say. And God, that you'd do a good work in our hearts today. We love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said a big amen. Amen. That wasn't very big, but we'll go with it. It's kind of weak today. Um, So this week I had to buy an Apple TV remote because about three months ago, um, a child not to be named, my youngest, did something with the remote. I I have no idea where it is. I'm sure if we moved one day, which I never want to do again, I never want to pack another box I don't want to take apart any beds. Come on, can I get an amen from anybody that's moved a lot? I don't I have no desire to move. Um, even there, you're like, well, there's companies that can do it all for you. You still have some involvement. You know, you still got to do something. I just don't want to do that. I'm sure if we ever did, we would find it somewhere. But when I bought it and it uh, got to the house, I, um, I was opening it and I had this thought. Years ago, I was the remote. Anybody grow up in that house? You were the remote? Yes. I'm, I'm dating myself right now. Um, I was the remote. Like for all the younger generation, you used to have TVs that didn't have a remote. You had to get out of the chair. You had to walk over to the box that sat on the floor that had picture frames on top of it. Come on, somebody. Y'all help me. And you were the remote and you had to click it all nine channels. Click, click, click. And then if it wasn't coming in good, you had the dial on the outside of it. Y'all with me? Anybody remember, know what these mean? UHF, VHF, right? You're like, was that a channel before MTV? No. UHF, VHF. I have no idea what it did. I still don't care what it did. I just know that sometimes to dial it in, you had to do that. Then if you got a little more advanced, you had rabbit ears. Come on, somebody. And some of you thought that if you put tinfoil between the rabbit ears, it would do something. You're the same people that wrap your phone in tinfoil to keep the big brother from... I'm kidding. But, but I was the rabbit ears too guy. Like my dad would be like, no, move it a little bit, move it a little bit, move it a little bit. And finally it would, it would tune in and, and your picture would get a little bit more clear. Um, for a younger generation, um, <clears throat> it's when you're buffering. It's not coming through. Come on, somebody. It's buffering. You got the, the, the dial of death that won't come through. Kind of the same thing, all right? It's, it's when, when you're spotty on the internet. Kind of the same thing. Just rabbit ears. You had satellites in space or somewhere. I don't know. You had to get the tune in, and it would have these lines through it. And now what, what you do is you use that filter on Instagram to make it look cool. It wasn't cool back then. It was aggravating, all right? You had to tune in your TV, and, 
And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the right frequency because when you got the right frequency, you could get the right message or the right picture on the TV. And here's what I know about us in life is that all of us are tuning in to some frequency. We are either tuning into the frequency of what the world wants to say. We're tuning into the frequency of what media wants to say. We're all tuning into some frequency, the frequency of what our friends are wanting to say. All of us are tuning in. And I just want to propose to you today that you've got to learn to tune in to the frequency of heaven. That you've got to learn to dial in or, or, or uh, log in or, or I'm trying to get all the generations or turn the rabbit ears this right. You've got to learn to tune in to the frequency of heaven so that you can hear what God is wanting to say. Because here's what I know is that the enemy is broadcasting 24 hours a day, seven days a week and wanting to fill your mind with the messages of hell. Are you with me? And so I just want to challenge you to this question. One, are you tuning in to heaven's frequency? Are you tuning in to what God has to say? I'm not talking about, well, I'm at church. Of course I am. No, no, I'm not talking about once a week for an hour. I'm not talking about once a week for an hour from someone who's prepared the meal for you. I'm talking about, are you in the kitchen yourself? I'm all kinds of metaphors, frequency, kitchen, meals. I'm talking about you. And I would ask this question to you too. How much of your waking hours are tuning in to what God wants to say to you and how many hours are tuning in to what the world wants to say to you? How many hours do you spend tuning in to what the enemy is wanting to plant in your life? No wonder we are filled with anxiety. No wonder we are filled with cases of depression. No wonder our minds are filled with negativity. No wonder our minds are filled with thoughts that that are not healthy and are not aimed in the direction of what God wants for us. No wonder because we are tuning in all the time to the broadcast that is not coming from heaven. We're tuning in all the time. In our cars, we are tuning in. In our houses, we are tuning in. And I'm not just talking about the media outlets. I'm talking about what are you allowing to digest into your life? How much of your waking hours are you going, God, I'm going to filter out everything that is not your voice, and I want your voice to be the loudest in my life. You've got to tune in to the frequency of heaven. If you're going to have victory day by day, if you're going to win in life one day at a time, And victory really is found one day at a time. It's going to be because you tune in to the frequency of heaven. This is why in the series next month, we're going to be teaching you. I'm going to teach you beginning next week. I'm going to teach you how to spend time with God every day. How many of you know it would change the trajectory of your day if you heard from God every day? I'm not talking about just on Sundays. I'm talking about every day of your life. You go, no, I heard from God today. God spoke to me today about this or about that. I don't know about you, but I have, God has um, saved me from so many things in my life because I took a moment to hear from God on that day. Or God has helped me in some situation because I took a moment to hear. I want to help you hear the voice of God. But here's what I want you to know first is that hearing God doesn't begin with your ears. It begins with your heart. It doesn't begin with your ears, it begins with your heart. And this is the parable that Jesus is teaching to us. He's using this metaphor of seed, of soil, and of sowing. He's using a metaphor of seed, soil, and sowing. Are you with me? Say amen. Amen. Now, if you're a note taker, write this down. If not, become a note taker today. None of us have that good of a memory. The seed represents the word of God. The seed represents, in the parable, the seed represents the Word of God. It is what God is saying. And here's what I want you to understand, is that God is always speaking. That that God didn't stop speaking at a time in human history. That yes, the Word of God was revealed and, and created and God worked through to, but God is always speaking to us in our heart through the Word of God, through godly people in our life. God is always speaking. And God is in control. I want you to understand that. I know that some of you may feel like, where's God in the middle of all this? God is right in the middle of all this. Because my Bible doesn't tell me that I'll have an easy life, but it says that God will never leave me, never forsake me. It tells me that my God is working all things together for the good. He's working the good for the good, but he's also working the bad for the good. But if I'm not tuned into the frequency of heaven, then I will live overwhelmed. 
I will live so negative. I will live with anxiety. I will live thinking everything is falling apart, that everything is being shaken, that the foundation is coming from under me if I'm not tuned into heaven. And so the, the word is represented by the seed. The soil is represented by your heart. And so Jesus tells this parable of I've got a word represented by the seed and I want to plant it into the soil of your heart so that as it is sown into your heart, it will produce a crop or it'll produce a harvest or it'll produce good things in your life. Here's what I want you to understand is that the word of God, when put into action, will produce good things in your life. But did you notice what I said? Not the word of God will produce good things in your life. The word of God, when put into action, when I receive it, when I do something with it, that, that's where faith comes into the equation, that I heard the word, I'm going to do the word by faith, believing that it's going to produce something in my life, something good in my life. And so I want to walk through the four seeds and tell you the kind of heart I think they represent what Jesus is saying here. Matter of fact, a few verses later in Luke 8, he explains the parable, so he tells us what he means. You don't have to guess. And, uh, and I, want you to, I want you to evaluate what kind of soil is my heart because I want to be tuned in to the frequency of heaven. Number one we see in this is the unsubmitted heart. The unsubmitted heart. Look in Luke chapter 8, verse 12. The Bible says this. Jesus explains this to the disciples, and he said, those along the path... So the seed that was scattered on the path are the ones who hear. So it's not that, that they didn't get to hear the word of the Lord. They got to hear it. But then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. So they hear the word. So listen to me. Listen, it's possible to hear the word and then the word get robbed from you. It's possible to be in the environment. It's possible for the voice of God to be speaking to you well, no, God doesn't speak to me. No, 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 God's speaking. It's possible for God to be speaking to you and then the word to get robbed from you. Now, follow this train of thought with me. Things of value I protect. You protect things of value. Your family, maybe some possessions, maybe something someone passed down to you. You protect them. Why? Because they have value to you and you're not about to let anybody steal it from you. Are you with me? The seed that fell on the path is seed that didn't value the word. And the reason it didn't value the word is because it didn't understand the authority of the word. Let, let Walk this train of thought out with me. God's word isn't powerful just because God said it. Hang with me. Some of you are like, you heretic. No, it is powerful because it is backed by authority. If I go into an environment where I have no authority whatsoever, I could go to, if I, if I walked into the boardroom at Apple and said, we're making an iPhone 2058.6. It's going to be three feet long. They would say, uh, security? <laughs> Come get this. Why? Because I have no authority in that boardroom. If I walk into my house and say, we're selling this home, I have a little bit more authority in that environment. I got to get Tammy to agree. Are you following me? But I got a little bit more authority in that home than I do in the boardroom of the Apple Incorporated. Are y'all following me? When God speaks a word into creation... That word is the final word because he has all authority. Are you following me? So when he got up and said, stars hang in the sky, creation bowed at his word because his authority backed the word. It wasn't that he just spoke words out of his mouth. It was the authority that backed the word. Are you following me? So his word is powerful because of the authority that is backing the word. This is why I don't bend the Bible to fit my preferences. I bend my life to fit the Bible standard because I am not the final authority. God is the final authority. 
That's why when people ask me, Pastor, what is your opinion on popular social issues? I say, it does not matter my opinion because I am not the authority on what happens within creation. God is the authority. And so since he has all authority, I go to his word, I find out what he says, and then I get in step with that word because he has authority. I don't. Are you following me? So follow this train of thought. So if I valued the word, I would have understood the authority of the word and I would have submitted to the word. So the seed that the devil can steal from you is the word you're unwilling to submit to. That's not a popular thought. We don't love the word submission in our culture. And it's because we live in a democracy, but we are been born again into a kingdom. We live in a democracy where every vote counts. But we are in the kingdom of God who has a king. And he doesn't do voting. He sends out a word. But he's a gracious king. He's full of mercy. He's long-suffering. His mercies are new every morning. So every time we don't submit to the word, you know what he does? Grace. Another opportunity. Second chance. But if I'm going to have good soil, if I want my heart to be good soil, I, want, I don't know about you, I want good soil. Because I want everything the word has promised me. I want all that to be produced in my life. I want a harvest of everything the word has promised me. If I'm going to have that, I've got to have a submitted heart. Submitted heart is good soil. An unsubmitted heart, the, the seed gets stolen. I don't want any seed of God's word. I don't want any word that God has said to be stolen out of my life. I want it to be planted deeply in my life. I believe you want the same thing in your life. But it begins by realizing I'm not the authority. God's the authority. And any authority I have came from him. It came from him. And so the the quicker I get that, the more fertile the soul of my heart becomes. The more good ground it becomes. It's not that God is trying to like rain on your parade. No, no, no. He's the creator and the creator understands the best way for his creation to operate at full capacity. I say it this way. When I live obedient to God, it brings the blessing of God. So I tell my kids all the time, obedience brings blessing. Obedience brings blessing. And obedience is my response to a submitted heart. If you're with me, say amen. Amen. The second type of soul is this. It's the immature heart. The immature heart. Jesus said in verse 13, he said, Now the rocky soil, that represents those who hear the message with joy. So like, like they're, they're in the environment. Here, here's what I want to point out too. Isn't this amazing about our God that no matter the condition of your soil, he keeps speaking. Because all four of them heard the word of the Lord. All four types of soil heard the word of God that he keeps speaking. And he said, the soil represents those who hear the message with joy, but like young plants in such soil, their roots don't go very deep. They believe for a while but they wilt when the hot winds of testing blow. So so on the rocky soil, they hear the message. They hear it with joy. Like, oh, that's good. Like, they're amening. Are y'all with me? Like, Like, they're on it. They're like, this is a good word. Thank you, God. Like, I love this. I'm all about this. And then it says, though, that the roots, though, don't go very deep. And that when testing comes... It wilts. Here's here's the deal. Maturity takes time. Maturity takes time. Deep roots take time. It takes time. And it takes what else? It takes consistency. It takes consistency. And it takes consistency sometimes without results. And here's where where it fights against Um, our our natural bent of thinking is this, is we want to be able to microwave our faith. Can I get that in 90 seconds? 
Can I get that in two minutes? But God crockpots our faith like my mama used to put on before church. So when you came back from church, come on somebody, the stew would be ready. God likes to crockpot our faith. It takes a little bit of time to develop. It takes a little bit of effort to develop so that our roots go deep so that when the storms of life come blowing, we aren't uprooted so quickly. God sends testing. Here's the deal. Testing is sent to prove your faith. Don't resist the testing. If my kids didn't get tested in school, then they wouldn't know if they'd retained the information that the teacher had been trying to impart into their brain. The test is the proof that they got the message. Here's the deal. When God sends testing in your life, a storm allowed into your life, it's not that God is trying to destroy you. God is proving you that you got the message, that you understand what is going, that your faith is building. Are you following me? But listen, you can't build faith when you're hopping churches. You can't Netflix Christianity in this season. Well, if I don't like this pastor's message online, I'll go to another one online. If I don't like that one, I'll find another one online. If that one doesn't speak to me, just not speaking to me, then I'll find, well, maybe it's the soil that's not, I just, if that one's not speaking to me. You can't Netflix, you can't binge watch the Bible and expect to get deep roots in your life. You've got to get planted in the house of the Lord. Then you will flourish and you will grow. (laughs) Students, you've got to be planted in the house of God. Deep roots, parents, you've got to get your children planted and rooted in the house of God. Why? Because whenever I'm planted, I will mature. I'll mature. The Bible says this in Colossians 2, 6, and 7. It says, therefore, as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, so walk in him, listen, having been firmly rooted. Somebody shout rooted. Rooted and now being built up in him and established in your faith. You don't want to be blown around by every wind that comes along. You don't want your faith to be as such where it's just surface level roots. You want to be rooted deeply. You want when the storms of life come that you are rooted. You want when someone comes with thoughts or or you get some frequency that doesn't seem to be heaven that you're able to go, no, 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 that's not right. That doesn't line up with the authority of God's word. You want to be rooted. You want to be established. Why? Because it produces a good crop in your life. You will have a good harvest in your life. Number three, is the undisciplined heart. (laughs) These are all like, these are just like great words. Unsubmitted, (laughs) immature, undisciplined, right? Everybody's just loving this message today. It's it's gonna help you, I promise. (laughs) He said, the seed that fell among weeds stands for those who hear, but as they go their way, as they just go through life, They are choked by life's worries, number one, riches, number two, and pleasures, number three, and they don't mature. So they they hear it, the one that are among weeds, so there's other things things competing for the word, but as they go on their way, they're choked by life's worries, by life's riches, and by life's pleasures. Pleasures. Here's the deal. Whenever you begin to plant the word of God into the soil of your heart, the enemy's going to want to plant a lot of other things. All right. That are going to want to choke out the word. One of those is, he says, worries. And if I had to guess in this season, so many of you have allowed worries to choke out the word getting planted in your heart. It's not that, it's not that nobody worries. And if you worry, you're like a horrible Christian. That's not the case at all. We all worry. We all have things to worry about. Some of us, we have more and some of us has less, but we all worry. And he's not saying that riches are bad and he's not saying that pleasures are bad. What he's saying is when when we are undisciplined in our soil, we allow those things to choke out the word of God. So instead of those things becoming peripheral, they become center and focus. 
Whereas God is saying, no, I want soil in your heart where the word is central and those things are on the periphery. It doesn't mean that I'm not worrying about it. It doesn't mean that I don't understand God. Why did I get laid off? Why did the furlough happen? Why did I lose this person, God? Why am I walking through this? Why is our marriage? Into, like, it doesn't mean you don't have those worries. It just means that at the end of the day, you're going to come back and go, okay, I know that God is working all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And I love him. So I'm going to trust in his word. I'm not going to trust in the worry. Or I know that God has good plans for me. They're to prosper me and not to harm me, to give me a hope and a future. And so I'm going to focus. I'm on the word of God. I'm not going to allow this worry to choke out the word of God in my life, but I'm going to allow the word to give me strength and foundation and security and joy and peace in the middle of it. I'm going to keep this on the periphery, not in the center of my life. But then he goes to riches. So he's not just saying on our bad days, but on our good days. Because some of us can think, man, I've been good in this season. I haven't had any worries because I got plenty of margin. And God wants to say, no, no, no. Don't put your trust in things of this world, but put your trust in me. Keep me central. So when it's going great, keep me central. When it's going bad, keep the word central in my life. Don't allow those things to choke it out. Because when you do, it doesn't mature. It doesn't grow. Paul said it like this. I've been abounding and I've been abased. King James right there, y'all. That's what I grew up on. He said, in other words, I've been doing great and I've had some days I didn't want to live. But in all things, he said, I've learned to be content. In other words, my circumstances didn't dictate my attitude. Why could Paul say that? Why could he say that? Because he was locked in on what God had to say about him. You know why? Because he was tuned in to the frequency of heaven. How could he say, for me to live is Christ, but to die is gain? You know why? He wasn't tuned in to the frequency of the world. He wasn't getting a steady diet of the world. He's getting a steady diet of the word. Because he had good soil. Because hearing the voice of God does not begin with your ear. It begins with your heart. It begins with your heart. I love this in Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. It says this. It says, since we are surrounded by so many examples of faith, let us get rid of everything that slows us down, especially sin that distracts us. Let us run the race that lies ahead of us and never give up. We must focus on Jesus. Let us get rid of everything that slows us down. When Paul, or whoever I think Paul, was writing Hebrews, we don't know exactly, but the image is this. It's of an Olympic runner who would get rid of everything so that nothing would cause them to have draft in the wind as they ran. That's what Paul is saying. He's saying, get rid of everything. Anything that is going to slow you down. Anything that's going to choke out the word of God in your life. Get rid of it. Live discipline, because that's hard. I know it is. It's so much easier to have a pity party. Right? It's horrible. Life's horrible. So much easier to get on the phone. Can you believe what's going on in our world? Never thought I'd see the day. I went to Target the other day, and they told me, pull it up over my nose, cover my mouth and my nose. Can you believe what's going on in the world? I ain't going there again. I ain't shopping there again. I'm going back to Walmart. So much easier to throw a pity party and invite all your friends to it. It takes a lot more discipline to go, no. God, I'm not going to allow these things to choke out your word. I'm going, to, I'm going to renew my mind every morning. Paul said it this way in 1 Corinthians. He said, take every thought captive and bring it in subjection to the authority of God's word. Is this thought of God? Then I'm not, I'm not going to read it. I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to allow it to get, take root. Let me encourage you something. You don't have to think everything you think. And you definitely don't have to say everything you think. It's called Discipline. Number four, 
Number four is the prepared heart. The prepared heart. Jesus said this in Luke 8, 15. He's, he's describing the soil that was good soil. He said, but the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who, three things, hear the word, retain the word, and persevere. Hear the word, retain the word, and they persevere. And the result is they produce a crop. So they put themselves in a place or position so they can hear the word of God. They're in the scriptures so they can hear the word of God. They're in the house of God so they can hear the word of God. They're in community with other godly people so they can hear the word of God. They position themselves where they can hear the word. But not only do they hear it, but they retain it. They, 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 they hold on to it. They don't let anything steal it. They don't let anything choke it out. They don't let anyone rob it from them. They retain it. They value it. They see the authority of it. They guard it. And then they persevere. They keep going with the word. They they keep going. Even though they may not see the result of the word immediately, they continue in the word. They understand the words of the New Testament that said, don't grow weary in well-doing for in due season or at the right time. If you don't grow weary, you will reap a harvest. So they hear the word, they retain the word, and then they persevere in the word. And then what happens? They produce a harvest. And I'm telling you, if you will do that, If you'll be good soil, you'll turn into the frequency of heaven. And you'll hear the word of God. God will speak to you. You put yourselves in places where God is speaking and you'll hear God. You retain it. You guard it. You value it. You say, God, this word is value. What you say, God, is what I'm going to do. The direction you give me, God, is the direction I'm going to go. Even if it's hard. Even if I don't love it. There's things I read in the Bible sometimes that I'm like, I don't like this. But I would just say, if you, if you agree with everything about your God, then you've probably created a God in your own making. The Word of God should rub you. It should challenge you. It should cause you to go, but I don't want to forgive that person that was mean to me. I don't want to respond in love to people that have responded hurtful to me. God, I don't want to be generous. It should rub you. But if you decide, I'm going to retain it, I'm allowed to take root. I'm going to mature. I'm going to persevere. Even when I don't feel like it, even when it's difficult, even when I don't enjoy what it's instructing me to do, I'm going to persevere because the word is the authority. Then the Bible says you'll receive a harvest. You'll produce a crop. So whatever that is, you want a crop in your marriage, you want a crop in your finances, you want a, a harvest in your relationships, in your career, and in the area of your life, then tune into the frequency of heaven. Log in to what God is saying. And let your heart be good soil. Let it be submitted soil. Let it be mature soil. Let it be disciplined soil. Let it be prepared soil. And it's in that environment that you hear from heaven. Will you pray with me? With every head bowed, every eye closed. I just want you to take a moment and evaluate what kind of soil you are. What's the condition of your heart as it relates to hearing the word of the Lord? And no matter where you find yourself, here's the good news. Our God is full of grace and full of mercy. And so if you'd say, I'm, I'm unsubmitted, you know what? He's great. He's just, he's so good at when you go, God, I just want to submit to your word haven't been doing that. He's like, awesome. Arms open wide. If you'd say, I've been an immature, he's like, great, I can help grow you. If if you feel like I've been undisciplined, he's like, great, I can empower you. You're not doing this alone. For some of you today, though, the seed of the gospel is what needs to be planted into your heart. The Bible says the gospel, it simply means the good news. Well, what is it good news for? The good news is that Jesus came, that he died for our sins and that he rose again three days later, proving that he was who he said he was, the son of God, 
the power to take away the sin of the world. And that's such good news for us because the Bible teaches us we've all sinned. And so he has a solution to all of our problems. And it says that the wages of sin is death. It's an eternal separation from a loving God. But the gift of God is eternal life. And it's found in Jesus alone. And the Bible says the way we receive this free gift is by faith. It's by putting our trust in what Jesus did for us on the cross. And so I'm going to invite you to do that today. Paul wrote in the book of Romans, he said this, that if we'll confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart the resurrection, that God raised Jesus from the dead, we will be saved. We will be forgiven right now in this moment. And so church, we're going to pray this prayer out loud together, making that confession. And for some of you, it's for the first time. For some of you, you're like, you know, I've strayed away. I've been far from God, but I'm coming back today. And so no matter where you find yourself today, we're going to all pray this together for your benefit out loud. So church, every location, no matter what room you're joining with us from, pray this with me out loud with confidence and boldness to say, Jesus, I need you. I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. I believe you died for me. I believe God raised you from the dead. Today, I make you my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate with those who made that decision. No matter where you're joining us from, I want to ask you to take one step. The Bible says that all of heaven is rejoicing over one person that makes that decision to say yes to Jesus. And so we just believe that there's a big old party going on. You know, dozens and dozens of people every single week are saying yes to Jesus, not only in our campuses, but literally with our online family around the world. And so if you made that decision, we want to help you in this journey. This is the beginning of something. It's not the ending. It's the beginning of a journey of faith, relationship with Jesus. And so I want you to reach out to us this simple way. Just text LCS to 94000, LCS to 94000. And I wrote a book a couple of years ago called Fully Alive, and it's a free resource we want to get in your hand. It's all about how to take your next steps of faith and what this decision means in its fullness and and just how to journey with God and, and continue to be good soil. He wants to keep talking to you over and over day by day, and we want to help you in that journey. Hey, hope today's message was helpful for your life. I want to tell you, you should subscribe. The reason why, you can get content pushed to you all the time. You don't have to wonder if you ever missed anything. And also, I want you to think about giving. By giving, you can help us take this message to so many other people that are in need of some hope, need of some encouragement, and you can be a part of making a difference in the life of so many people. Look forward to seeing you right back here next time.